Um, so a few comments to frame the day for us. Um, I like to start by describing uh, what a co-op cafe isn't. So it's not a training and it's not a workshop. Okay, It's actually a facilitated conversation on something that matters. So uh, we're not here to tell you how it goes. Actually, we're here to actually discover um, the wisdom in the room and to hopefully go home having moved our own thinking forward. So I know I've come in the room with some thoughts about the topics of the day and I'm hoping that I leave the room having advanced my own thinking. Uh, so that's actually our first goal that we accomplish that advance our thinking uh, for people who are here. The second uh, piece is that we build shared understanding. So the, the layout and the, the setup for the, the day is very much about working together and comparing notes and connecting the key ideas. And what we're hopeful for out of that build, under, uh, build understanding is alignment. So that idea that, oh, we can see actually how we come together on some things. And that has a couple of different components. One is uh, the potential for building alignment at a co-op, and then also building alignment among co-ops, right? Because we've got both of those dimensions happening. And then this is a national conversation that's taking place. This is one step uh, on a road show. We were actually in Sacramento last Saturday running the same uh, conversation and Later, Leslie and Joel will describe the value of illustrating your thinking with quilt squares. And there's a quilt from the Sacramento conversation that's up against the wall over there. So if you want to see how did they represent their thinking from the day it's on that quilt. And we're in Madison, Wisconsin in two weeks. No, Raleigh, North Carolina, and then Madison. And we kind of build the quilt story over time. So we're bringing your work to, to those cafes. So advance our thinking, build shared understanding, create alignment, um, add it among co-ops. And then what's the content? So we have these two really big ideas that we're going to tackle today, co-op impact and co-op participation. And what is pretty neat about the, um, the day is that it's not either of those in isolation. It's really about how they intersect. So as I've been thinking about it, today really talks our conversations will really address like what does it mean to be a co-op? Because on the one hand, co-ops are inherently mission driven here to make some difference. And impact is just like the one word label for those really big ideas. So our goal in the morning is to unpack what impact looks like and then focus on that. So There'll be some big thinking and then we want to actually be able to distill it down. What does it mean today to have impact coming out of our co-ops? And then the participation piece is that it's actually people and the actions and decisions that we make as individuals and working together as teams that creates the impact. So after we kind of unpack and focus on what impact looks like, we'll unpack and focus on what does it mean to have literally thousands of people involved in contributing toward the creation of that difference? That's the big idea. And they are big ideas. And our, I think our work today is to take the big idea of co-op impact, co-op difference, why are we here, and actually get it to a practical level where you could tell your neighbor about it and it actually means something and that we could actually talk to people about how individuals make it happen, right? So that's step one and step two. Um, before I go to step three and four, there's a quote that um, surfaced when we were in the design phase about community, and this is really like the optimum condition for human fulfillment. So I just wanna plant that with you today and just see how that, you know, how you might connect with this. This is a quote from Sid Pabahushki. He passed away a number of years ago, but a great co-op thinker in, in, in Canada. And, and what emerged in, in Sacramento was 
how much co-ops are about relationships between people, which, you know, somehow maps to, to uh, what does it mean to be in community. The, um, the third part, uh, after we unpack and focus on impact, unpack and focus on participation, we're going to do kind of a light touch on what does the organization itself bring to these relationships that help us as individuals be successful? So what does support look like? So it's not like we're all just out there doing random things. We're trying to be working in uh, organized fashion. What does that look like? And then the fourth piece is you in your role and the people at your table in their roles, how do we actually bring it home to the people in the room today and how we contribute, right? So that we have a little structure for that. And so our goal at that point is like, okay, we've got the big idea, we've got how lots of people participate, how do I fit in that? And then how do I see outside of my own self so that I can really relate to how the people who are sitting with me are also contributing maybe from a completely different position in the co-op. All right, so that's the lay of the land. Uh, the magic is actually uh, happens at your table. Uh, doodle like crazy, that's really fun. Help people stay on track and connect the dots. Um, one thing you'll hear in a few minutes um, from Sheila from NCG, she talks about the importance of, when she's talking about impact, she talks about the importance of measurement. And just planning that seed now so it gets reinforced when she describes it, that when you're in your conversations today and you're hearing the thing about impact, what would it look like on a graph? I'll be really curious. We didn't float that so much last week in Sacramento, and I think it's really an interesting way to think about the impact pieces. How do you measure and how do you show it visually? So see how that goes for you. Thanks. Great. Have fun. Looking forward to it. Great. Thanks, Mark.